Hey everybody, it's Nate from Explorers.life. I teach people how to build DIY campers. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to add fuse holders to a Victron Lynx power in. Now this video is episode number 24 in a series of videos where I teach you all the basic electrical skills and concepts that you'll need to tackle the next electrical project in your camper. Now in last week's video, we covered the four different parts of the Victron Lynx distribution system. And I use the Victron Lynx distributor in pretty much all of the wiring diagrams you can find at explorers.life slash solar wiring diagrams, because it is a fantastic way to get a positive and negative bus bar with four fuse holders all in one nice, neat and modular package. But the Lynx Power In is a bit less expensive and looks nearly the same. So what gives? The Victron Lynx distributor has a positive and negative bus bar, and it has spaces for four fuses right here. It also has this little computer board on it right here with these LED lights on it so that these lights right here will light up whenever any of these fuses are blown. Also, if this is paired with the Victron Lynx Smart BMV, this computer board will communicate to the Victron Connect app to show right on the app if any of these fuses are blown. Now, if you don't need the blown fuse indicator, you can simply add some bolts to the Lynx Power In so that you can use it in the same manner as a fused bus bar system, similar to the Lynx distributor. And that is exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. So let's just get started. So here are the parts that we need to add fuse holders to the Lynx Power In. We need four bolts, 12 washers, four split lock washers, and these nuts. And now we can start putting it all into the Lynx Power In. I'm going to remove the two screws for the cover and remove the cover. Now we're going to be adding all of this hardware into these four holes right here so that we'll be able to fit fuses onto any of these fuse holders. We need to access the back side of this retainer here, so we need to unscrew these four screws one, two, three, and four. And now we can remove this retaining clip and just set it aside for now. We'll take our four bolts and set them in place right here. And then four of the washers to go on top of these bolts. Now I can put the retaining clip back in place and reattach these four screws. Next we can grab four more washers and put them on each of the bolts. Then we can put one nut onto each of the bolts. And tighten it down until it's snug. And since this is kind of a DIY hack, there are no torque specs for these particular ones. So just make sure that they're nice and snug, but don't over tighten them because this is plastic that it's being held in by. And at this point, it's actually ready for wires and fuses. So if we were going to go ahead and hook this up, just pull those off, place our fuse in place like that, put our wire over the top there, and then put a washer, a lock washer, and a nut back into place there. And same thing up top. And tighten it down. And that's pretty much good to go. Now, since I'm not doing anything with this at the moment, I'm going to go ahead and finish putting the extra hardware on the remaining studs so I can just put this aside for future use. A washer on each bolt, split lock washer on each bolt, and then cap it off with a nut on each bolt. Now I've got a parts list of the required hardware in the video description below, and the hardware on the Victron Lynx distributor is all stainless steel with the exception of the split lock washer, which is copper. So the parts list in the description is for those specific metals. Now, will less expensive zinc plated steel hardware, like what's really common in pretty much every big box home improvement store work for this project? Um, probably. And you can definitely go down the rabbit hole of stainless steel versus zinc plated steel for this application. But all I'm going to say is that the original Victron Lynx distributor hardware is stainless and copper. 
So do with that information what you will. And remember, if you don't want to mess with adding bolts to the Lynx Power In, you can always just buy the Victron Lynx distributor and it's ready to go right out of the box. It's just up to you with how many pennies you're trying to pinch and how much messing with it you're willing to do. And also, if you want to modify the Lynx Power In to have the LED lights like the Lynx distributor, just don't. <laughs> just replace it with the Lynx distributor. The, uh, the computer board inside of the Lynx distributor is not really available for purchase uh, by the general public. And I'm sure it'd just be cheaper just to buy the Lynx distributor than to buy a Lynx power in and the hardware and the computer board. So you do you, but just consider not. Now, next week, I'm going to cover a $10 hack to get the lights in the Victron Lynx distributor to function properly whenever it's not paired with a Lynx shunt or a Lynx Smart BMS. Now, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, it'd be awesome if you would share it with somebody or a group who you think could use it. Hit the like button and leave any questions you've got or new things you learned in the comment section below. Subscribe if you want to see more DIY camper building tutorials, and I will see you in the next video.